Last year I moved from my biggest studio to what used to be a closet. And as I predicted in the initial tour video of this space, there's been a plethora of changes and tweaks in this space and we're going to talk about them next. By the way, if you want to learn how to build your own home studio and get some awesome jam tracks to jam to, head over to catpickstudios.com and sign up for the email list and you'll get a bunch of awesome freebies. But let's talk about the studio, shall we? The basic setup of the studio is still pretty much the same. I'm still using the BenQ 32-inch monitor and then I'm using the second monitor mainly for the ATEM switcher stuff. But there are some situations where I might need more screen space and then I just move the monitor above the BenQ monitor and have just a ridiculous amount of screen estate. One of the biggest improvements and something that I kind of noticed just a month or two in while working in the studio, I was running out of desk space all the time. So actually I put it this little cute shelf here. And what it allows me to do is actually have my ATEM Mini and the new audio interface and things like that above the laptop. And I can kind of just slide it in over here and just have a little bit more desk space, which I sometimes really need. And speaking of audio interfaces, yes, I actually switched from universal audio. I had been a universal audio interface user for a decade at least. I switched. I just got so annoyed with some of the stuff they were doing. Having to download like a three gigabyte update file every time there's an update for the interface, that was annoying. And when I actually saw my Apollo Twin that I bought like in 2012 or something, transferring the plugins to the new owner was actually impossible, which was super annoying. And then I bought a B-Stock audio interface from Thoman, like a new Apollo as well. And because it was a base stock, I actually didn't get any of the plugins into my Universal Audio account. And it was a whole mess and it took like four weeks for Thoman and Universal Audio to figure that out. And by that time, I was done with them. Went with Audient ID44. This thing is bigger, but it means that it also has more inputs, so four inputs. It actually has a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, which is really cool. Two headphone jacks all kind of awesome routing options. Took me a while to learn how to route everything for live streaming, for example. But once I got it done, I've been super happy with it. It just works really well. Audio quality wise, I hear no difference compared to Universal Audio, except this is way cheaper and I get four inputs instead of two. Doesn't have the plugin thing, but I'm not 100% sure if I even need that. So I'm happy. Laptop wise, I'm still using the MacBook Pro, the 14 inch one with the M1 Pro chip that has MagSafe and HDMI port and stuff like that. I think I've never been as happy with a Mac as with this one. It just works. I've been using the HDMI port quite a lot actually, which is really cool. Sharing a desktop into the AT Mini, for example, is super simple now. No dongles or anything like that, just an HDMI cable. And I've never actually felt like this computer would run out of power. Even when editing kind of very complex projects in DaVinci Resolve, I feel it's actually gotten better with the updates that the software has had. And I guess the best compliment I can say is that I haven't had to think about it. Uh, yeah, I think that tells you everything you need to know. After several tries and kind of rewiring a lot of things here in the studio, I finally managed to get this set up to a point where I only have to place the laptop on the desk and plug in one cable and pretty much everything's connected. Audio interface, the ATEM Mini is connected, uh, and through that the cameras are connected. And yeah, everything works through one cable, charges the laptop as well. And I still have three USB-C ports available on the laptop itself, so I can plug in this microphone, for example, which, by the way, is another upgrade because I sold my Shure SM7B. <gasps> I know I did that because I got tired of cranking the gain on any audio interface and still sometimes not getting enough signal. It was annoying. It was super heavy. I was using one of the tri orbit stands from the wall to kind of have it here. And it kind of broke my wall a little bit, actually, because the microphone itself and the tri orbit stand just they were heavy. They kind of started pulling out the screws from the wall, which was a problem. Plus, because I actually switched on the interfaces and didn't have like the live plugin thing going on anymore. When I was doing live streams, I didn't have any kind of processing going on unless I would run it through Logic and it was kind of annoying to do that. So what I did was upgrade or downgrade 
depending on your point of view, I went from SM7B to Shure MV7. But this is not a stock MV7 because I did a thing that I spotted on one of the YouTube videos. I think I searched for some comparisons between SM7B and this one. And the trick was to get a pop filter for SM7B. So basically when I ordered this microphone, I well got it, I took the MV7 pop filter out and put the SM7B filter instead of that. And that gets rid of all of the plosive issues the MV7 filter had. And to me, it sounds almost the same. It's not exactly the same, but it's almost the same. And I can just run one USB cable into my computer and use this as an audio interface and kind of all of the processing and everything gets baked into that file if I want to, or can get a clean signal just using the XLR from here. Super practical, especially if you're on the road. Just grab a microphone and a laptop and you have a killer sounding live stream setup on the go. And yeah, so far so good. I bet many of you haven't even noticed that the microphone had been swapped from the SM7B to MB7. If you had, let me know. Light setup wise, it's pretty much the same. Two aperture lights over there. And then I got two of these Nanolight power tube twos, I think they're called. And the cool thing about these is that, first of all, they're rechargeable, so you can actually use them with battery for two to six hours or so. And you can also use them both for kind of clear light or some color, which the other light is doing is kind of shining a little bit of blue on my shoulders, as you can see. In Chile, I tried to use these power tubes with magnets they come with. Uh, basically, you can kind of glue the magnet on the wall and then it should stick there. But my lights kept falling off during the shoots and I got tired of it. So I'm just using things like this here. It just makes more sense. Audio wise, I'm still using the Focal CMS 50s. I've had these for a decade almost now. I'm super familiar with these monitors. They still sound good. And because I'm so used to them, I can trust my mixes to be good on other devices as well when I get them right here. I've done a lot of tweaking to how the videos actually look. If you take a look at the first shots I got in the studio and how it looks now, the differences are subtle, but they do make a difference, I guess. I feel I've gotten good at making this pace look bigger than it actually is. So when you're watching, you don't feel claustrophobic and like how is blood feeding into the studio. Something like that, I think you get the point. If you're a regular viewer, you might have noticed that I've started doing uh, songwriting live streams and I tend to do much more of those in the future. And that wouldn't be possible without the ID44 because I can now route the microphone signal from this one and then take like a stereo out from a modeler, for example. I run all of that through the ID, mix the levels properly, and then all of that goes into the ATEM Mini which does some compression and leveling, kind of makes the signal really nice and loud, but not too loud. And then it goes through the Streamlabs OBS, and then you'll have all these kind of chat things and stuff like that there as well. And so far, so good. I've been really happy with the setup. I would love to get a third camera here. I keep talking about it. One of these days, I will get a third camera, but today is not today just yet. Something that I also did at the end of last year was selling my slider. I kind of liked it, but it took a lot of disk space, which I don't have plenty of. And I also don't really have a proper camera to kind of pair it with. I have been using the iPhone and this has like a wide angle lens, but there's something with the iPhone and kind of studio lights, whether I would kind of use this via HDMI out or I would record into its internal memory. Something's weird happening with the footage. It looks weird and it's kind of difficult to sync it with the ADM footage. So I just gave up and will maybe get some other slide at some other point. Maybe when I get that third camera in 2028 or something like that. The Podgo that you saw in the previous studio tour is actually gone. I sold it to partially kind of found this guitar over here. And there's something else coming my way at some point, but right now I've been happily using the new XMG30, which is actually a killer device. And a demo of that thing will be out soonish. Or if it's out, you can find it here in the cards already. Something that also happened because of me moving into this studio was that I ended up selling a lot of gear that I didn't actually need. And I, I don't know, I had 
12 microphones or something like that. And I felt like I just ran out of storage space at some point and it made sense to get rid of all of that stuff. Again, used some of those funds to get myself a guitar. So not a bad deal if you ask me. And at this point, I guess it's obligatory or whatever the word is for me to ask you to like, share, subscribe, tell your friend, send this video to your grandma, something like that. I don't know how those are supposed to go. And um, yeah, be sure to ask your questions if you had any and the other videos on the screen as well and things like that. Thank you so much for watching. I shall see you next time.